Hi, I'm Andrew Trendle. You're watching Enemy, and we're here with David and Steph from Soul Wax. Hey, man. Uh, so, uh, how's 2020 been down at Studio? Oh, I've never said this out loud before. Studio De Devi, Dewey, Dewey, Dewey. 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 Um, how's 2020 been down at Studio Dewey? Very busy, yeah. but also it's just Dave and me. But before, there's always other people around, other people working in. In the other studio upstairs or somebody doing something else so they've been maybe the most productive of times but at some point maybe also just dave and me <laughs> we're looking forward to getting some other people in <laughs> but it's still been a, a really good flow of um releases from from soul wax this year and the latest was a let's be honest fucking banging new single um and a concept we're all familiar with <laughs> empty dance floor uh, what, what can you tell us about how how that came about well we got asked to do um by apple to do to make music for uh, uh the new is, is it already out yeah it's out it's okay. called they, they <laughs> have a product that they released called the uh, airport uh, <laughs> airport max which um, is like their headphones and they asked us to make to make music for that for the uh, product video the product video which is a fun thing to do for us because it's also something we I mean, we never really do, but because it was like an audio thing and we knew the guy who designed it and it was like, a, so we're like, yeah, cool, we'll do that. Um, and then when we finished it off, they were like, hey, but this is really great. Like, you guys should do some, make a single of it or something. And it was this weird thing where we're like, yeah, yeah cool. We, and we just made it in like a couple of days. And then we said to, it literally was done two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Yeah, 10, 10 days. 10 days ago. And it's kind of fun to see something that you, it kind of brought us back to, I think maybe the night versions days and all these times when you would make a thing, you would play it at trash, somebody would hear it, somebody would come into Rough Shit today afterwards asking, hey, I heard this mix and whoa, what was that? Is that out? And they'd be like, no, never heard of it. And it's just this directness of, of things, just, yeah, it's fun to see that it can still happen today. And that, that lyric, um, I can barely remember how it feels. I mean. Is yeah. that, is yeah. that how you guys feel about fun in general and, you know, dance floors? It, yes. It's maybe not necessarily how we feel, it's, but it's what we tend to hear. Like, we, we get a lot of people telling us how how much they miss... That energy. I yeah, think. that that particular thing, like, of, of being in a loud club, hearing music loud and being amongst other people. And I think it proves to us that the, the, the desire for this is so huge that yeah. it, when it will when it does come back and it probably won't come back all in one go but like when, when it does come back the, the 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 demand is so huge this is one of those things you know people talk a lot about the demise of other other industries which is it's it's completely valid and it's it's a, a tragedy and same with uh with with the sort of the nightlife or music industry but I'm pretty confident that it's going to bounce back like like never before, just because the the demand is so 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 gigantic. And also, when we we I think in, uh, that lyric also kind of referred a little bit to in beginning of September. I think the Belgian government kind of did sort of an easing of the lockdown. They were kind of like, yeah, things are going, although the numbers were going up again. And there's a techno club here called Compass, which is like a, a, a one of the best well-known clubs here and they were like hey they the city council said to them look you can do social distant events and you can have djs again you can do this and they asked david and me to 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 play one day and we did three sets one in the afternoon one in pre-evening and then at, at night and the first set people were really emotional and it was not just because uh of the going out being in a room it was literally the loud music and the impact emotionally it has on you and uh, and i think that is something um that for us has maybe been because I, I don't think for us it's the nightlife element that we miss i don't miss people <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that i i could, I could disagree with but <laughs> what i do miss is that 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 emotion of making people lose their minds and 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 have an experience where they feel connected to everyone else in that room. That, that's a big thing. Like that's a, feel, a big feeling. Thing, a communal, yeah. a communal feeling. Um, yeah, which ultimately, you know, we we know it in clubs that go up to maybe five thousand people, but ultimately this extends to your Glastonbury's and your big festivals. Mm. So, we even two hundred people, I think. Yeah. 
and um, and that's a, that's a thing that you can you, know, you can just sense that it's it's uh, something people I think miss more than many other things that they are they are being um, that have been taken away from them. So are you concerned about the future of clubs, or do you just feel as if nightlife will find a way? I mean, it's very, it's a really hard one to say because we don't want to be. It's a it's it's needed uh, black or white. I don't think it's the demise of the whole club culture. It's like Dave says, that feeling will come back. Yeah. It's merely the hope, I think, Dave and me, that some young kids will come up with some really good inventive ideas of doing this without it having, because it was pretty corporate. It was becoming an industry. Mm. And um, and yeah. it was def- and it's definitely, maybe this should be taken as an opportunity, I think, for the good parts of it to be to be stronger and then the more corporate things amongst it to maybe disappear. Yeah, I mean, throughout our lives, every five years or so, we were, we were being told that something oh, it's not gonna, yeah, it's was gonna, being told, like, oh, this is going to be the big new thing. This is going to be the new punk. But maybe this is the maybe finally, this is the final, yeah. finally, this might be the time where we really see a new generation. Talking about kind of turning new generations onto dance music. I mean, you, you guys have recently celebrated the 15th anniversary of, of, of Night Virgins. I mean, how does it feel looking back on it after all this time? How do you feel about the legacy of this record and what it did for yourself and for kind of nightlife culture when it, when it crossed the worlds of rave and rock when it was happening on the periphery, but then it kind of happened all at once? It's a twofold answer because it, it had a huge impact for us personally. Yeah, because it was uh, maybe like three or four years prior to that, we'd we'd gone through the too many DJs sort of um, explosion, which it became like a whole thing, was which is almost bigger than us, like it was insane. Um, but what was especially satisfying with night versions is that we were we were feeling a way to have the same impact as we were, were having with our DJ sets, but by playing live and um and it, it, it's more satisfying <laughs> it's more satisfying to feel uh to see you know people go nuts to your own music than than by playing other people's music so night versions was one of those things which gave us a, a sense of freedom and autonomy on so many levels but we were looking for I think as an identity, because we were DJing as too many DJs, but we were also making that record any minute now with Flood. And I think he was really good in, in pinpointing the fact that we were somewhere in dubio in between dance music, rock music, dark music. He was like, and I think he was trying to not literally, but in, in some weird way, try to make us uh, make a choice in what we wanted to do. And this idea of, making we wanted to make a rock record and then maybe it was it was a little bit also a reaction to everything that else that was happening with too many djs and that other world that we were uh, occupying and uh, and then i think once we finished any minute now we were very how can i say that not disappointed but i think we rapidly understood that okay this is going to be another three years of our lives mm-hmm. being in a band having to release a single mtv radio this whole machine that comes along with releasing a record as a rock band and i think the immediacy of of what we 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 had with too many djs or even a soul wax remixing other people was so quick and fast and so direct that we i think we weren't yeah we, we were looking for something else because yeah, it was we, we, much more attractive than than yeah. trying to fit into this mold that we we just never yeah it, that never works for us so it's been a busy year and obviously we had the the db sessions um what can you tell us about what's next from from solax is there another new album in the can um but nothing nothing specific that we we we've worked on but there's a lot of db stuff it's good to say that the building we're in now the studio it's called Dewey, and pretty much everything we've done the last five years, I think, say five years, has been recorded, produced, mixed here in this building, which is kind of a little bit like what Dave was saying in the beginning. We're in this period now where we kind of have to work with people via link ups and stuff like that and Zooms and stuff like that. But it, but the end result of everything we do is, is done here in this building. 
Um, but during the lockdown, we worked on a lot of stuff. And I think for next year, it's like uh, we're going to release on DV, a Charlotte Adigiri re record. Um, there's a lot of uh, new DV stuff coming out. Um, James Wright. James Wright. And I'm, uh, we're making a record with him. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to be coming out. But, yeah, but I guess Stephen, we make a, make very little distinction between Soul X, uh, a Soul X remix, us doing DV stuff for people. I know for people it all lives in categories, and sometimes it's but in our heads it's pretty much the same. It's mm. like we're putting time into it. So, so just before the pandemic, we we were supposed to um, start working on a tour, a Soul X tour. Yeah, but. So, so because of how it works is you know it's like a it's it's now become this thing it's it's quite big it's three drummers it's seven people on stage it's a big crew um for that to work and have everyone in the same room it's uh you know during the pandemic it's been tough so so we've been trying to focus on stuff that we can do just by ourselves or with people uh, over zoom but it's, it's it would be amazing to be in a room again with with everyone and just see what we come up with so if the pandemic allows they're could be a tour and would, would, would there maybe be more Despacio nights as well? Definitely Despacio. Yeah. Despacio is one uh, we were we were about to do yeah. a couple of Despacios and um, yeah yeah definitely I think James is <laughs> he's the, he's number one driving force at the moment he really wants that but <laughs> yeah. also that's maybe one of the things that we're going back to that uh, I can barely remember how it feels Despacio of all things is maybe the one thing that we created with James together, where I do feel the sound and the, the physical experience of going and listening to that music, vinyl through these Macintosh amps and everything. Yeah, that, that's that's a physical, emotional experience. That's definitely something that I know if we're going to do the first one after everything, like that's going to be emotional. Mm. And especially for us even as well, I think. Well, remember, I think Dave, I spoke to you a couple of years ago and you mentioned that there was there had long been some unfinished music with, with James. I just wondered if lockdown had pushed your hand to finish it. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you for reminding us. Uh, <laughs> no, oh, actually, actually he, he sent it to us. He's the one who sent it to... He's been going back to it. So. Yeah. Oh, it's maybe, definitely... Yeah. It was definitely... I guess... I forgot about it. Yeah, yeah, we forgot about it as well. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it's just one of those things where... It, it, needs to, it needs to resurface. It needs to resurface okay, at some point, but us. that but but it has to have a context, I think, for all of us. And and I think the the one pitfall <laughs> that James Steve and we have is that we'll be like, but we can make some more. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when you're like five years time, you'll be like, hey, remember I talked to you guys about night versions, and you guys said you're gonna. <laughs> it's it's just a it, it was. It was definitely something at a, at a point of time where I think for him it, it was fun to make music without the pressure of it having to be LCD or something like that. And Dave and me also without the the pressure of it having to be Soul X or something, just having fun. Which is an amazing note to end on. Steph, David, thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.